Welcome back to the Dance Equations YouTube channel, inspiring young mathematicians one dance step at a time. So if you've followed my channel a little bit, I focus on teachers who would like to use dance in the classroom and more specifically, dance to teach mathematics. Today, we're gonna go through dance and some other curricular links that I use in my lesson. Let's go. Dance is a fantastic tool in the classroom. A lot of people think they can't dance, but that's simply not true. I help teachers use creative movement in the classroom. And what creative movement does is we get to jump right into exploring movement without worrying about steps or counts. And we get to explore and express ourselves with the music right away. It's an excellent tool because it takes very little prep time. And that's something I'd like to stress today is that once you have your basic development of dance or playlists and music picked, which we have a, a video all about how to pick music for your dance class. So if you want to click here and you can go to that. But once you have kind of that set up, dance is a really quick thing to go to and it takes very little prep. The benefit as well is you can see who's understanding a concept right away. So instead of handing out a paper, correcting a paper, also having to make that or find that resource online, um, you can just have dancers working in the space right away, exploring symmetry and see right away who really understands symmetry and who is struggling. So dance can actually save you time and that's the first point I wanna make with this. I also try and put in other lessons on top of it and I'm gonna give you a couple examples now. Okay, so this is one I did in a school in Toronto with a group uh, many, many moons ago. Can't remember the exact year but I was working with a program called Learning Through the Arts at the time, and so it was when I was first starting to explore math and dance. And the people at Learning Through the Arts said, hey, we were gonna do a presentation about what this program is all about. Can you come up with a, a dance piece to present at this uh, presentation, this show of what all the different schools are doing with uh, Learning Through the Arts? I said, for sure. Now, how much time do I have to do this lesson? Well, learning through the arts, there were a portion that we would only come in for like three classes and then eventually got extended to four classes. So it was about four one hour classes. That's it. I had four one hour class classes to get 30 students doing something together, learning math through dance, and ready to perform on stage. And I tell you what, I did it. And included a lot of other cross-curricular links within that one lesson. So I'm just gonna walk you through what I did, because that's probably the easiest thing. So I decided to start with symmetry. The class was about grade one, grade two. It might started out with developing symmetry exercises with a partner, okay? And it might look something like this. Like in the book, I have diagrams. If you can see, it's movement that goes from maybe down to high, but it's symmetrical movement. You can get as complicated as you want with this. Um, but you can also start very simple, just moving down to the floor and then moving up. So this is kind of something we started with and developed. From there, we added in uh, patterning and specifically numeric patterning. So something simple, for example, with this, we did say eight counts in and eight counts out divided by two, four counts, four counts, two counts, two counts, one count, one count. So that's where we started with, with developing some movement based on symmetry and numeric, numeric patterning, okay? After that, I wanted to, I had to find a way to get all the dancers to move together. So we created these larger group patterns, these larger group patterns where you can clearly see their partners, right, in here. And they can clearly see that they've made up their own movement, so they're all in different shapes, but they're symmetrical. So once, after we developed it individually and did some demonstrating and, and sharing with one another in the class, we moved to creating some formations where we used the same material, but we had the whole group being symmetrical, okay? Then we decided to say, well, what kind of themes can we, can we add on top of this? So they were doing a couple of science units like, um, uh, it might have been um, liquid and solids, but they might have also just been looking at um, the, the states of water. And so we decided that it was getting close to Christmas concert time or winter concert time, whatever you celebrate. And we thought, well, let's give this a winter 
concert feel because this is the season as well. So we said let's look at snowflakes and snowflake patterns and let's look at the movement that we can generate from the different states of water. So it gave us an opportunity to also talk about this other curriculum that they were working on in their classroom. And so that inspired the quality of movement that we did in the lesson. So that's one example where we were able to blend multiple themes together and then create a production. So that saved the teacher a lot of time. We already had a dance performance then to use later in her winter concert at, at her school. We also had covered a curriculum in math that they were doing a symmetry. We covered curriculum for numeric patterning and we came up with multiple um, patterns. We also went into a little bit of um, movement uh, rotation because from this formation, we went into circular formations and we talked about different forms of symmetry and we also um, did some calculations of how do we match going around the circle with the, with the music and how fast do we have to travel. So like a little bit of introduction to like movement and velocity or circular velocity, um, which, which we could just keep kind of adding on to. It, it, you have the capacity to just keep moving into themes, which I think is what's so beautiful about working with dance is, you know, you're not confined to also what you prepared on the paper. You can kind of explore like in real time and the kids get very invested in exploring this with you and coming up ideas. Um, so that's just an example of, um, some cross-curricular links, but there's other things to think about. So sometimes my lessons, fractions are connect really well with movement as well, like music. Um, and then that also connects very well with your dance and movement. So you have fractions, music, and movement. And if you have theater, you can also add in any sort of theater themes on top of that or liter literature themes you're working on as well. Uh, vocabulary in qualities of movement, right? If you're working with young students on vocabulary, right? Push and pull, vibrate, shake. You can also work in some spelling and vocabulary they're working on. Like I said in the other one, velocity, rotation, musical notes, and also with music and dance, there's frequency, there's all the mathematics related to tone. So this doesn't necessarily have to be just young elementary students. Um, in the second book, which is um, choreo choreography and mathematics, we go into um, musical theory as well. So we start off with, of course, the mathematics behind the notes, but then we begin to relate that um, a little bit more in depth with frequency. There's some fun stuff right there. Um, and then after frequency, there we go into a little bit more detail of like uh, circular velocity, right? So we use that in our dance lessons as well as movement. So there's a ton of math in dance once you really start to think about it. Um, and then on top of it, dance needs to have a theme. It needs to have some sort of inspiration, either a philosophical theme or a story, a uh, movement expression. So there's so many ways to pull in um, more curriculum within it. And like I said, I really think it can save you a lot of time. Another really fun exercise to do, another combination I really like, is geometry with music. Now, musical notation, right, is one thing. It has its own notation. But you can introduce music with your own notation. And I use geometry for that notation. And we can look at the geometric shape and the size that it has and relate it to, to notes. Then we can take the music that we create with geometric form and we can turn it into a dance. But even geometry, geometry, you can look at like geometric frequency. So it's also a gateway into other mathematical themes, not just um, the shapes. So again, this is another way to, we can put a lot on top of a very simple lesson, sort of very basic with exploring math and movement. And then on top of it, adding in lots of other themes that we work with in class.
So if you find found a suggestion like this helpful, please tell me in the comments because I want to know like uh, if you have any other um, suggestions like, well, how would I mix these two, or how would I how would I blend these these two courses together? Or I teach this split grade and I have you know these these criteria to meet. How can I meet them in the middle? I mean, you're the one in the classroom. You know the challenges, and I really want to help with those challenges. And I definitely think dance is something that can help you with those challenges. So please put a, put something in the comments below or maybe um, a connection I didn't think about that you think would go really well together and see if I can come up with something unique to share. But I wanna do more of these videos and I wanna hear from you. So please like and subscribe and hit that notification button so that you can see when new videos are coming out. Thanks so much for your time and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Keep dancing.